Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your host, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. The big story today is um, uh, Steve Tweaks is back. That's the big story today, I, guys. You know, Steve, I come into the office and go, oh, I just can't bend over. Can't. That's not what I said. I simply can't. That is not what I said. I think what I said is I'm jacked and I have 24 abs and mm-hmm. it's recovering better than usual. And also, I have a bodacious booty. You do. This could it have been delicious. an episode from 2016. No. <laughs> That's how long. That's not true. I this, didn't have a bodacious booty in 2016. This Steve back thing's been going on. Yeah, when did the when did the back thing start for you? When I was like 13 years old. Because I would run track and ride my bike like crazy. And then I would come home and sit down and play StarCraft with you. But like this. And yeah, and weirdly, that's not good for you. And no one told me that because I was 13. StarCraft was great, though. It was great. Zergling Road. So what else is new? Nothing. Nothing. Not a th- you know what? If you listen to the podcast, nothing. <laughs> that's good. That's what we want. Yeah. Nothing. That's if, what we want. If you watch the podcast, there might be. We got Adam's basement renovated. Yeah, we did. We told you we were moving. Surprise. No, actually, that's not true. I wonder how many people clued in on, hey, Adam's moving. There must be a change I did, in the studio. I did get a message, one message, one yeah. DM, who was like, hey, are you are you going to put this in your new house? And that was it. I did see one. One uh, Man, I love the, the detective. Mm. Well, because you're moving again. Yet again. Yes. That must mean landlords have a problem with you. Is that what somebody <laughs> said? So you got kicked out. Oh, is that what I said? <laughs> no, no, that's what that's what someone said. Oh, I, I have. I, oh yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Landlords, have landlords a have a problem Listen, with you. My landlord, shit. No, my landlord's jealous of my season's tickets to the Leafs. That's what they're jealous. Oh, of. that's right. That's what it is. They find out I have season's tickets, and they're like, they're like, wow, that guy, he can't be here. I can't, I can't be upstaged by my tenant. Yeah, we I need, need to, to talk about the old picture that was discovered of you and your season seats. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. From 2014 or something? Yeah. We were on the show at that point. Like, we were all doing the show together. But um, I think it's uh, Michael. I forget who it was. Uh, yeah, no, no. Anyway, long story short, I was at oh, this yeah. game. This game was a Christmas present um, from my girlfriend at the time. And then we ended up on TV and a bunch of people tweeted it at me. But at the time, this is how long ago this was, they like why frogged it to me. You know, do you remember oh that? Oh my god! Or like TwitPic. Yes. So Twitter didn't have a native like image upload service. Yeah. You had to use like TwitPic or one of those Y Frog or yeah. whatever it was to upload yeah. images. So that to, so that was on the Twitter. TV uh, at the time. That was a shootout, and that was my girlfriend Allie at the time. And she took me to the game for Christmas, and I think it was Jan twenty second, twenty fourteen, or something like that. Between the Leafs and Devils. Yeah, and I remember, and I tweeted this at the uh, tweeted this at the guy that that sent it out. It was um, that. Um, uh, that I, I thought Stuart Percy really could be the, the guy of the future for them. He played a great game that night. I mean, what I want to know is what you're doing wearing a Leafs jersey to a Devils game. No, <laughs> that's a good point. That's I never, what I want to know. I never it's have a, a chance. Devils game. Never, I never miss a chance to see my Devils in person. You know. Did I ever I tell you that another Devils game I actually caught a puck? What? Yeah. You lived my so, childhood dream? So when I was a kid, uh, I saw another Devils game randomly. And Ty Domi and Christoph Oliwa squared off. Ooh. Had a good tilt. And then there were and you know, and then and then it was done and they're both in the box. And then uh the play continues and the puck goes into Christoph Oliwall's uh, uh box and he takes it and flips it into the crowd, which I don't think you can do anymore. And I caught No, it. you get uh arrested. Yeah, I caught it. And so, I was I would think it was like, yeah, ten or eleven. Adam. This game January twelfth, two thousand fourteen. Okay. Leafs won 3-2 in the shootout. Uh-huh. I need to know who scored the only goal of that shootout. <laughs> there were six shooters. Oh, man. Well, like, listen, I, if I get it, it's a complete guess, and I don't deserve any credit. This is the 2013-14 season. So, like, this is Jared Smith, Smithson and Tyler Bozak was their top line. Padre's center. there. Padre's there. Uh, so- Smithson was not in that game. I think he might have played that season. Bozak was there. That was when they got Dave Bolin. I remember that, that year, and then he got injured. 
I like Poland the was on that team, but he was injured. On your, on your phone. What's that? Yeah. What do you have? What's on his phone? It's a 28 day workout challenge according to age. <laughs> cool ad, man. And they're all <laughs> wearing cowboy There's hats. There's a bunch of shirtless dudes in cowboy hats. <laughs> they're all wearing cowboy hats. <laughs> Well, I didn't know that was a staple of gym culture. Well, <laughs> who won the? Who scored the shootout? Goal? Who scored the shootout goal? Okay, so six people shot, which means it can't be JVR, Bo, Zach, or Kessel. It can't be Kuhleman. It can't Kuhleman. be uh, uh, MacArthur. Who was the second line center? It couldn't be Kadri. Joffrey Lupel. You're wrong. It was actually James Van Reems. It was hey! JVR. So, so I think I threw you off with the number. There were six shooters, three per team. Oh. Yeah, no, that's my okay, fault. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's Fair my enough. fault. I, I took it to six Reams rounds. Back. I took it to six rounds. JVR scored on Corey Schneider. Um, that's when Corey Schneider was traded for Bo Horvat. Yes. He was the only player to score in that shootout. The guys who were stopped uh, include Ryan Klo, who was uh, head coach. Oh, my. Of the Newfoundland Growlers and Yarmir Yager, who wow. I forgot was ever a devil. I forgot. I have seen Yager play a couple times. I guess I forgot he was there. Can we can we talk about what the listeners have no idea what we're talking about? No. What do you mean? Where we are? Oh, okay. Hey, we're in a brand new studio. Toronto. Oh, hey, oh, okay. hey. So, um, so you know, you're you're gonna see this studio kind of take shape. It's it's mostly done, but there's some things that need to happen. Obviously, with some cameras and some other things that that are still to be done the screen below there if you're watching is not not on it's not on there's a screen but steve well, is- how are we gonna talk to dave <laughs> <laughs> yes you're gonna find out aren't you <laughs> yeah aren't you? uh anyway i the i guess uh, you know the the move thing on friday um we we haven't been talking about this but we have been planning an sdpn hq for a while and we have one and it's taken the better part of seven or eight months to pull it all together. And uh, this studio actually was just installed on Friday. That's how tight the timelines were. We're in the CBC studio. That's right. We're not. We're not. We're we moved in. But SDPN the has old its <laughs> coach's corner set <laughs> right here. <laughs> we're not. We're not. But that we set is actually enormous. That'd be hilarious. We are. Uh, we, we. You know. <laughs> We kind of were like we're we're outgrowing my basement after ten years. Uh, we've been Finally. we've been in several of my my places. We were in my mom's basement. We were in uh, my condo in the spare bedroom and in the living room for a while. Um, you know, we were at Rogers a couple times. We were at Bell for a little bit, and then back to my basement. And now we're like, okay, maybe we should get our own. Okay, you really like throwing out stuff you don't. So I need to ask because if you still have it, we have to bring it to the. Do you still have the Justin Bourne Memorial fan? No, I don't. No! I don't have the Justin Bourne Memorial fan. When Justin Bourne came to my house and sweat his balls off in the middle of the summer. He, yeah. like, we <laughs> hadn't even begun the show, and he's like, I'm sweating. I need that. Well, if you remember that place, it had big windows, and uh, it had an undersized air conditioner. We were always hot. It got up to, like, and 90 degrees. And we recorded in a closet. Yeah, we did. Well, that was the spare bedroom. The, the downtown Toronto spare bedroom. Yeah, it was a closet. Yeah, it was tiny. Tiny, and it was hot. It cost five thousand dollars we a week, and we were on metal chairs. Do you remember those? My back does. They were. Why, like, why do you like think it's all folding locked? chairs? Right? No, no, they weren't folding. They were just, but they were like iron chairs. They were even like they look like folding chairs, but they were. Yeah, we sat on metal freaking chairs every show for two hours. Carry them up the stairs and clang them into the railing. Ding, ding, bang, yeah, bang, bang. yeah. Anyway, right. so we've come a long way. Yeah. So Jesse did all the design here. Uh, with the company and and I want to say Jesse congratulations I think it, oh, I think you. it turned out okay um, and so I guess this is all part of the bigger bigger uh, uh, focus here obviously we've got a ton of shows at SDPN and we wanted to have the opportunity for them to be able to come in now a lot of our stuff is remote as well like CJ is like Mr. World Traveler and Julian lives in Calgary and you know Alan's in town once or twice a year but we have three studios Jesse, you want to kind of explain what's going on here, like we, you know, with the rest of them? Sure, yeah, we could, we could talk a little about the other ones. So we we internally at SDPN, Ooh. there's there's Ooh. Studio One, there's Studio Two, and Studio Three. This is Studio One, uh, the main big studio. The Uno, know. we call it the Big Uno. You'll see different shows know. pop in here now and again, and then we have Studio Two, which I'm hoping I can christen with a final season of my Arizona Coyotes season. 
uh, franchise mode. That will be our streaming studio. It's a mock living room. I, I think you guys will love it. Uh, we have an artist coming in uh, in the next couple of weeks to finish that one up. It's not quite ready yet, and I'm hoping uh, once that's ready, I can get in there and do my Arizona Coyote stream. But also, it can entice dear Mr. Dangle, since he's in the building, since it's a cool new studio. Maybe he brings back Red Dead. Oh, <laughs> get out of here. No way. Here's, no way. Here's what I need. I need no sports. No, sp I just need a background of the horizon. Face me to the western sun <laughs> so I can think back at all the great times we had that way. That's what I need. You need to come back with that because yeah! you barely got through that first chapter where it's all there's walking in the snow and it sucks. It, the first part of Red Dead, it's like, can we just skip this whole part? Yeah, you really do have to give that game a little bit of time. Yeah. And then it gets fucking great. Yeah, it and does. And then it gets fucking sad and you keep playing. And then it gets fucking great again. Okay. Now, yeah. Jesse. Yes. Uh, and then Studio 3. Studio 3. Which was inspired by dear Adam Wilde, who suggested when, he, when we walked in. What did you say? I said, this studio could really use some exposed bread. <laughs> And it has it. It has yeah! it. So when you see that one, uh, that was was a really fun one to design um, because I think it looks the most luxurious. You know, this is well, the, it's high back leather chairs and exposed brick and fake plants. I, I saw some chairs that look like they're fifty years old. But no, they're, they're no, but chairs. Wayfair, they've got just what you need. <laughs> yeah, they and have, they have everything. And we need to find some sort of fake fireplace for it. Too. And stacks yeah. of books about the Napoleonic Wars. Absolutely, yeah. you'll love the the fake trees. It is not between two ferns, but we may have a couple. It of is ferns. a little li between two fern yeah! ferns, -ish. which I think is it's, hilarious. It's also a little <laughs> bit TikTok podcast vibes, mm. except TikTok, TikTok podcast vibes are. Like it's got to be super clean and modern, right? It's like mm -hmm. you're gonna be the alpha male or the alpha fem female podcast, uh, which are all the you know the cringiest shit that's yeah. on the internet right now. Um, you need to have it. It has to be white background and lasers and, and shit like misogynistic. that. Misogynist. Yeah, this is a little bit more like <laughs> it's gotta have misogyny. <laughs> it kind of does. It's like, not a podcast without the misogyny. Part of, be a part lot of, of misogyny and classism <laughs> <laughs> and oblivious assholes. True. And bad financial advice. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Hey, are you poor? What if you didn't? <laughs> Signed a 24 year old. All you got to do is make $10,000 an hour and you won't be poor. Have you seen Have you seen that guy? And I hate this because McLaren is my favorite car manufacturer. I love McLarens. But have you seen that guy with the McLaren t shirt on? And he's like, if I roll up to the club yes. with my McLaren, I'm going to take that B word. And he's talking oh, about your girlfriend. Gosh, and I'm like, no. and he's. 120 pounds soaking wet uh this guy and he's like a he's a sentient, but he went he went he's viral a sentient spaghettini yeah like, yeah no yeah <laughs> it's crazy and yeah. the, the funny thing is what they've done is they've gone and dug up his past and what he was trying to do originally was be like one of those motivational like yeah go you people it didn't work out they're so now he went full in so, so he went andrew tate they're all it's crazy. it's crazy. So Studio Three. Studio Three. Uh, he will not be there. No, he should. We should have the show. We're gonna have a Alpha lot of Mail. cool the interviews show. in that space. Like we're gonna be bring people through these offices and. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought what? of a name for his show. What should it be called? Well, if it's gonna be in Sto Studio Three, it should be Exposed Prick. Oh, oh that's, that's good. I like that. Exposed Prick because there's the Exposed Brick and he's a prick. Wow, let's I like a, that. Let's but get a neon sign made. That'll be fun. Yeah, but people <laughs> might misinterpret the name. They might think it's a different kind of show. <laughs> no. Wait, when do we see it? <laughs> I am half an hour into this podcast. When is it? When is it? Big or small? Let's go. Show me now. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so Studio 3. Yeah, no, cameras are a little, little deceiving, so that's not the entirety of the room. There's some other areas there where we have some like solo cam work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Solo cam work with exposed prick. Yeah. Oh. Steve starting oh. an OnlyFans. Starting an OnlyFans. <laughs> oh. And yeah, we're just very excited to be in our new yeah. see a ring light anywhere. We can get one. Oh, we'll get yeah. you one. We'll get you one, sugar. Right. Uh, I think the... Uh, <laughs> only Steve. <laughs> only Steve. Does this GPM. new building come with an HR department? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's funny. You know, we do have... It's we, We've got like studio space. And this is full disclosure. This was an apartment. There's a kitchen right over there. Uh, which I'm sure you'll see on camera from time to time. Um, there is uh, office space, the floor below us. Mm -hmm. So all three of us, I think for the first time of our, in our lives, really have like real offices. 
Um, There's so much chocolate. Steve Steve has already decorated his office with Pokemon characters. Yep. Uh, do you see what I did to them? No. no. Oh, what did <laughs> no, you do? No, what no. did you do to my Pokemon? <laughs> You'll go see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you might have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go down there. No, no. No. You'll see it later. Cool. <laughs> what did you do? Uh, most important note about the new space. Hey, if there's problems with the editing or anything, Maddie, who's off camera, yeah. don't compliment section. Mm -hmm. Be complimentary. That's right. Give new people a break. Yeah, yeah, we should also welcome Maddie Smith <laughs> to the team. Maddie Smith, new of SDPN. You can't see her on camera, but she's amazing. Uh, she worked with me uh, for eight months at Virgin Radio, and we were looking for somebody to help produce some shows here. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, so I know. It's early mornings. They suck. Uh, and you had to work with me. Boo. But uh, but Maddie's a great editor. She's a, she's a really, really smart person. Went to... TMU like you guys did Ooh. another TMU grad so we know They're she knows up. her stuff man. that's right so it's a it's a it's good to have her and and it's cool to have like like a there's like a whole team here behind the scenes now which is kind of neat but so. there's there's gonna be hiccups no no section if please. it's not perfect then why ever do it don't even don't try stuff I couldn't even get the screens don't up sim and running. simply don't try how about hey, that hey you're not gonna win all 82 games all right it's not gonna be perfect right away Mm. That's, that's my pre-argument with the compliments. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't make a pre-argument with the compliments. Says the guy who, who I never read the compliments section. I, uh, oh, I never read it. I'm better than that. Mm. I'm, anyway. gonna, I was, I'm gonna say hello today. I'll be in there. Okay. Now I know what you guys think of the space. If you like the, it, uh, we're gonna get to Dave in a second here. But if the Panthers lose to the Sens tonight, the Leafs will clinch their seventh straight playoff berth. Wow. Does it feel like seven? <laughs> no. It's the worst purgatory ever. Like, they've been legitimately fantastic over those seven years. And they have nothing to show for it, man. It's driving me nuts. And I'm getting... It's funny. Like, people ask me about the Leafs all the time. For obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And I'm running out of things to tell them. And they're also not expecting anything. They're asking the question rhetorically. We're all sitting here waiting for the same thing. Just win a series. Mm -hmm. Just win. It's got nothing to do with regular season success. It's got nothing to do with how the team is built. They've gone into series as the favorites. They've gone into series as the underdog. And every single time, except for the Capitals series, it's gone to a winner-take-all game, and they've lost. A what do you want me it's to kind tell of, you? It is kind of wild how that's happened. Eh? The mathematical odds of that happening. And the, and the Capital Series was a six-game series mm -hmm. seven yeah, years ago. That was, seven, that was fucking seven years and ago, by the way. two series. OTs? Four. No, uh, five of those six games went to overtime. Really? Game one went to overtime. Game two went to double overtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Game three went to overtime. I was, was there. That yeah. Game four... Almost went to overtime. The Caps were up big. The Leafs came back, but weren't able to close it off. So that was a one goal game. Uh, game five, I don't remember if that went to overtime. I'm not going to lie. I think mm -hmm. it did. And then game six was overtime. Game I six was for sure. Yeah. 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 Wow. So every single game was decided by one goal. And you'd think in seven years, any one of those elimination games could have just gone their way. If you coin flip. put the, Columb the current Columbus Blue Jackets in seven straight winner-take-all scenarios, they probably win one. Anaheim Ducks? Probably not. Well, not the current. The, the Ducks and the Sharks, <laughs> not the maybe not. Maybe not, but the, the Blue Jackets. Maybe. I might have gone too far. <laughs> they, if but, you take any team not in the bottom four or five. With the exception of the Blue Jackets, they have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in the first round with Stanley Cup favorites from the Eastern Conference or teams that made the Stanley Cup final. Right. The the Capitals were a Stanley Cup favorite. Bruins, Bruins. Blue Jackets, not so much. Montreal Canadiens went to the finals. And then, of course, last year against Tampa, who went to the finals? Uh, is, well, because the 2019 Bruins as well. Oh, 2019 Bruins. So three yeah. out of six teams. Half the teams they have faced. Went to the finals. <laughs> went to the final. It's goofy. Like, it's, it's goofy. Yeah. It's... Uh, I'm running out of things to tell people, man. Like, it's... 
it's shit or get off the pot this year, big time. Weirdly, this year seems to be one of the best opportunities with the way Tampa has been playing lately. Where no, but this is what they're going to do. Good. This is what they're going to do, man. They're, they're, Tampa is down right now, and then they're going to bring it up. See, everybody's, everybody's like, oh, man, our, Tampa. Like, when has Tampa ever had a bad more than five games? Ever. Right now? In this run. Like, I'd say, the I'd first say, round I'd say against right Columbus, now. 2019. Like... Right? And That's why I don't believe. Five, it was so if they're gonna have it, have it at game seventy. Who cares? Oh, you mean like during the playoffs? Yeah. Or? Well, they don't. Well, they don't have bad runs in the playoffs. But I mean, even in the regular season, this team doesn't miss. They like are constantly good, and it's annoying because when you do see them falter, you're like, oh, like as a Leaf fan, maybe, maybe. But like I know by game one of the playoffs, whatever happened in game 69, 70, 71, who cares? In terms of narrative, they're the perfect matchup. You have a team who's playing poorly who no one will believe is actually bad until they see it. And then you have a team who's actually playing pretty well, who, who no, one, no will one will believe is actually worth it until they see it. I Does anyone have any clue what to expect out of a Leafs Lightning series this year? No. No idea. I don't no, know. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I'm getting big uh, Tom Brady vibes here from Tampa. Like, is the oh. same thing with... Brady going We're gonna to the retire playoffs, and then like, not retire. Oh, uh, <laughs> how's he, how's he gonna lose to the Cowboys? It's Tom Brady. He never loses. You can't bet against him. Then they they end up they get in the game and it is what we thought they you were. You mean Bucks Tom Brady this year? Yeah, not the, the Lightning, remainder. No, of his I'm talking about literally this past season. Okay, the we Lightning are not 43. We got into a situation where, hey, eventually it's gonna stop. They, uh, they're not. They're not gonna be not, good forever. Do you not see who's first place? The Boston Bruins? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eventually, the, that's going to stop, too. all wrote off. Yeah. Okay. No. I I was the highest on them, and I had them third. Okay. In the division. Yeah. But they didn't They didn't win. They didn't go to three straight cups here. That's not oh what I'm talking God. about. I'm talking about a specific team here. Eventually, it's going to... Do you think they're going to win we for the next... We have Do you think they're going to win for the next 95 years? Until I see them not win? Exactly. <laughs> so, eventually, one year is going to be the year where they don't win. Yeah. It's looking like it's this year. I'm going to have such a great time predicting winners right. for all the other seven series. Because, like, I I, I look at that and I'm like, I, th I think I know who, who's going to win. And I look at the Leafs and Lightning and I'm just so frustrated. I'm just, I'm just like, don't make me do this. I'm excited for when we get to You Can Bet That with Dave during the playoffs because I'm riding with the Leafs. This is their year. Are you? This is their You're year. You're not like, riding with the Rangers? And, and when I say, You're not going to ride with the and Rangers? And when I say this is their year, I mean they're going to win one round. Yeah. <laughs> this is... Because <laughs> that is the bar. It's so depressing. Jesse's got a Leafs-Rangers Eastern Conference yeah. Final. Yeah. Adam has a Leafs-Devils Eastern right. Conference Don't Final. Don't you forget it. You saw Jack Hughes' goal And I have a Leafs-Leafs Leafs right? Eastern Conference Final. Jack Hughes is ridiculous, by the way. Uh, let's talk to Dave. But before, I think he is, before, too, Adam. Yeah, before, he's a very good player. The new, new goal brought to you by the New Jersey State Lottery. Remember, Remember anything can happen in Jersey. We're going to talk to Dave in just a second, but first I want to tease this. Do the Leafs have a potential goaltending controversy? We'll talk about it after. You can bet that with David Bastel. Brought to you by Sports Interaction. Get in the action and make a play. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Dave Bastel. What's going on? Not much. N not as good as you guys right now, but uh, hey, looking good, guys. Looking Listen, good. We needed a studio to match your home studio, and this is what <laughs> okay. we came up with. I know it's not quite up to your standard, but we were, you know, we were attempting to catch it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I hear you. Throw some, throw some uh, jet blue and red in there, and I'll I'll be hanging out with you guys all the time. I'll go to studio instead. I you got a picture of Mark Shifley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best I can do is a Coyotes logo. <laughs> oh hey, oh hey. How's that? How's Woo! that? All right. So Dave, the first prop we got to talk so about is will a Canadian team yeah. reach the Stanley Cup final? Uh, be before you reveal the odds with this, Jesse and Steve, is it a yes. yay or a nay for you? And they, yeah, yeah. Who? The Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton Ooh. Oilers. If it's a Canadian team, it's going to be McDavid and the Oilers. Steve? The correct answer is Leafs versus Oilers. Oh, <laughs> two wow, teams. two Canadian teams. So, Dave, what are the odds on this one? 
Well, right now, Sports Interaction just threw that up. It's All you have to do is reach the final to win your bet. Uh, yes is a 2-4-1. A no is the favorite right now. And it's because of how many uh, teams, I guess, are ahead of the Leafs in the odds uh, of, uh, of Stanley Cup finals are concerned. 1-5-1 one, one is the no. Uh, there's two Canadian teams in the top eight for the Stanley Cup futures. That's to win it. So the percentages say... It, you know, like, you know, six six out of eight are American teams. So the percentage says no, but you know what? When we're talking about two significant teams that are that are in divisions, well, the Oilers are in a very winnable division to uh, exceed the Leafs. You know what? With the right breaks, are they there? They're part of that conversation. Um, yeah, it's it's not a bad yes bet, but it's uh, it's interesting because we're getting kind of down to that nitty gritty part of things. Now we save the best part for last because this is a bet that I made a long time ago <laughs> that I am almost convinced I'm going to nail, unless he goes over. Revisit, yes. We're revisiting this. Is Connor it, McDavid yes. total goals oh, this season. Oh. Well, I've already whiffed. <laughs> what did you guess on? What did you bet? I thought he'd slow down, so I did fifty to fifty-five, ah, and so I was wrong so a long time ago. Connor McDavid. What's your number? Yep. <laughs> what do you have? Sixty-five to seventy. Oh, oh man. Yeah. No, that's really good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get it, Dave. What are we at with the odds here? Well, right now, uh, sixty-five to seventy is a one-nine-one. It is the favorite at Sports Interaction. Sixty-five or sixty-one to sixty-five is a is a two-six-three. Seventy plus is almost a five. Here's my only question for you guys: nine games left. Mm -hmm. Is he going to sit out a game? Because that kind of hampers things as far as that goal scoring production is concerned. Here's here's the dream scenario in his final Fire. game of the season. He yep. enters with sixty-eight. <laughs> he scores 69 yep. 70 and 71 so that Adam loses his bet <laughs> no <laughs> uh, listen don't don't forget I always believe in you Connor McDavid uh, Dave thanks so much for joining us we'll talk to you again uh, on Friday looking forward to it thanks guys so do the Leafs have a potential and I'm not trying to drum up too much drama but do the Leafs have a potential goaltender situation happening right now yes they're gonna ditch matt murray and not enough people are talking about how they're gonna ditch Ilya samsonov and they're gonna ride joseph wool and eric shelgren into the cup final. <laughs> so so i don't i want to leave samsonov out of this because it's not samsonov that's a part of this oh, I know. but on saturday night by the way the leafs played two games this weekend back to back both were really well played i think by both teams the leafs i think deserved you could make the argument the Leafs deserve to win Saturday. They for sure deserve to win last night against Nashville. Um, but Sheldon Keefe said something after the game that I think is relevant. And he said, yeah, Matt Murray's been great lately. But when when you have to score four goals to win, you're not going to win all the time. I think he, he perfectly described him because I've been trying to figure it out. And Matt Murray is obviously not the same goaltender as Jack Campbell or uh, the same goalie Jack Campbell was in Toronto. But towards the end there with Jack Campbell, I would I'd watch and I'd see the score and I and I'd go back and look at everything and I'd be like, "Okay, what did he really do wrong?" Mm -hmm. Did he is and it was a lot of nights where you're like you didn't have to make a save there, but it'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Like like we're 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 not talking about the ones that go like right through you and the ones where you go should have had that there, there weren't too too many of those but at the end of the day you're like fuck we have to score three or four every night and that's what it's been with matt murray with the exception of the ottawa game where he faced like 50 shots and allowed four goals okay fine but yeah that what, that is an exception for sure take one of the four take one of the four from the hurricane team. we need one the i mean the rebound on the fourth one's terrible and that's the second time that's happened to him this season where the Leafs have tied it up, and like within the minute, it's cost them the game. It was actually how they opened the season against so the Montreal you, Canadiens. So with that rebound specifically and that goal at the end of the game, which, by the way, I have to credit the Hurricanes because that's a team that never loses focus. No. Like They just had a ridiculous call to go their way. We're going to talk about we'll go against them. We'll talk about that in a second. A lot of teams, they'd be like, well, fuck it, we lost this game. Not the Hurricanes, which is no. amazing. But... No. What happened on that specific play with Matt Murray and the rebound that you're talking about? Because I think a lot of people maybe didn't see it, didn't catch it. How would you describe it? Well, if you watch it on the highlight, you see Murray give up a juicy rebound, and it goes in. If you go a little further back in the highlight, you see Morgan Riley 
standing out in the middle of nowhere and there's a rebound and then it goes in. But if you go far back enough, if you were watching the game um, and it's it's too far back in, in the play to be on most highlight reels, mm-hmm. Timothy Lilligren has a chance to get the puck out. I'm going to start calling that guy suck because you're never going to see him again. <laughs> you're just never going to see him again. And I love the guy and I think he's a good player. Has all the tools to be a great all around defenseman. And you're never going to see him again. Not, not this season. Not this season. Nope. Unless someone gets hurt. I mean, l- l- I mean, you know, a puck went off Justin Hall. Um, last but what night. did Lilligren do in that play? Get the fucking puck out. I don't even care if you end up turning it over. Get it out. Out of the zone. That's it. And I, I sometimes I wonder with plays like that how it affects defensemen that the mantra is the, of the team is to get out with possession of the puck. Listen, generally speaking, that's the thing to do. Get that fucking puck out, man. And that, that's at least the second time in the past week where he had an opportunity to get it out relatively easily and couldn't. The one he whiffed on it, it's all part of it. I don't care how it happened. We're at the I don't care time of year. You know, the, uh, oh, I just whiffed on it. Oh, I lost the battle. And, oh, I, my shoelace was untied. I don't care. I don't care. And this is what we were talking about with the Stanley Cup uh, playoffs and the Leafs being unpredictable. Every series, if you look back, has a moment where you're like, this is winnable. They could have won this. Mm. And it's not even always in the game seven. Sometimes it's in the game six, or the game five. And other <laughs> times where they've had a chance to close it out. Yes. Yes. And you just need, well, I like, think, dumb, dependable hockey. It's, it's results o'clock, right? It's results o'clock. It it's has to what what it doesn't dumb. matter what you meant to do. It doesn't matter how great the stats were behind it. In the playoffs, it's it's did you win or did you not win? Is Cal Dubas's job still dependent on winning around? It shouldn't. Be. Oh, hundred percent. Right. We've gotten to this point. He still doesn't have a contract. I, I, I there's got to be something. Not hundred percent. I, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. But but like he should have a deal by now. And I think it's a little absurd that they're leaving it up to this four years. I think that maybe series. My here's my guess. My guess is that he's refusing to go. If they went, if they came to him now, he would say, "I'm not negotiating with you." Here's my guess. I feel no shame about my overreactions to anything the Leafs do uh, because I think their brains are just as broken as mine. And and I think they're married to the idea of... I mean, <laughs> they see all the evidence in front of them and by and large, all the evidence says he's done a good job. Why hasn't he won a fucking round? <laughs> and honestly, they might change for the sake of it. And that, I think, would be a big mistake. Yeah. Unless you're going to bring in Eric Tolsky from the Carolina Hurricanes, who I'm a huge fan of. He's Don Waddell's right-hand man. Uh, and I love everything the Canes have done. I'm a huge fan. I'm a Canes homer that way. Um, I, I, I think Eric Tolsky's the next great GM in the NHL. But I don't understand. So you're firing Kyle Dubin. I don't. I'm, no. In fact, I'm not. I think that what he's done this year has been spectacular. I'm not conceding that it's the right thing to do. I don't think it I'm is. I'm conceding that they might do. I think the way he's handled this trade deadline, the boldness that he's shown, um, no. the, and, and there has and a willingness to change. No, <laughs> no, no, he acquired six guys and lost two. Yeah, no. terrible. Yeah. He changed too much. Uh, the willingness Sorry. to break from because he had a he had an idea of what an NHL team should be when he came in in 2014. And then he executed on that idea, and it has not worked. It's worked in the regular season, but it has not got them to the second round or the third round or the Stanley Cup Finals. And what I'm seeing is a guy who's willing to change a little bit. Yeah, okay, oh, so, 100%. So we, okay, so we know that we don't need a, a thousand Nick Patans. Oh. You know what I mean? We know we don't need, and no offense, Frankie, we know I love you. We don't need... Uh, to bring in a guy like Frank Corrado and leave him here for two years while a head coach refuses to play him. If the head coach refuses to play him, we should just trade him. I think if Sheldon Keefe was coached during those years, Frank Corrado would have played. I, that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. That's my point. But but Stu- Dubas and Babs were on a, were in a bit of a standoff. And Levo and Holland. Yes, and, and Justin yeah. Hall. Oh, f- Justin oh Hall didn't God. regularly play until Sheldon Keefe yeah. was in. No, he was healthy, scratched, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 71 times. 
So to me, in a year, there's been, and you know, and he he came out and said that he he owned the Nylander situation. I learned from that. I shouldn't have done it that way. Whatever. To to me, Kyle Dubas has done everything you need to do right, and the team hasn't come through with him on the ice yet. But to say that he should lose his job because, and we went through it, uh, Stanley Cup favorite, Stanley Cup finalist, Stanley Cup finalist, Stanley Cup finalist. And I'm not making excuses. They need to win those series. But at the end of the day, this is the guy that, what, you think? You Results think? the clock. I, I guess. <laughs> you came up I with guess. it. You came up with it, Jesse. Here, I have a hard the studio. Time though. Yeah. We need a, a clock like Molly Is Weasley. It results a clock. Yeah. It just says, yeah. There's no time. It just says <laughs> results a clock. No, and no also the, mortal peril. You would just have results because the o'clock is the time, so it'd be the yeah. Time. Yeah, so you wouldn't put <laughs> you wouldn't o'clock. Put, yeah, you just put like results. Yeah. Do you do you honestly or, think that that's what they're going to do? You could have results at one end and excuses. At do you the think other. that's what they're going to do? Yeah, man. It's on the table. Like, it is 100% a possibility. See, I think with the season he's had, guys, I if the Leafs came to him now, I think he would say, no, we're going to wait till the end of the season. Here's Because he's going to get a job like that. There's a scenario. I, I Like, I could see scenarios where if they were to lose, he could get an extension. That would include, like, you know, the Tavares situation from the Montreal series. Like, Matthews, you know, blows out his knee game one. Mm-hmm. You know, all of a sudden you're without a superstar and you're trying to take on the lightning. And I think most people would concede, yeah, that hurts your chances a little bit. Other than that, like, dude, like, you know, the coaches uh, get hired to get fired sort of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And you look at the flames and you go, well, Daryl Sutter worked perfectly fine last year. Why isn't he working this year? It's the players. The players should be rallying around him. And it's not fair. Who gives a shit? His message got stale. It's not working with the players. Fire the guy. I don't care how well he did last year. Results o'clock. And then the, their results stink. Their results stink right now. And listen, again, I want to emphasize because some people... Uh, I think they're going to take you out of context. They're going to take me out of context uh, like they did the last you're time. Not saying, you're not saying the Leafs stink. No. You're saying that the results have stunk. And everybody could agree In the playoffs. On that. Yeah. Yeah. If, yes. if anybody's happy with a first first and out, uh, uh, you got to raise your standard. Well, <laughs> like the, the clip, honestly, the clip that we had that went viral last time, where I was saying like, you know, Dubis and Keith should be fired. The the situation that I was talking about is if the left wing is a problem in the playoffs, and there was a problem heading into the trade deadline. They acquired six guys and they came out of it, and Alex Kerfoot is still playing on the top line. You know what I mean? Now it's Yarn Croak. Better, but. And man, is it ever working? Yarn Crook, yeah. he's looking great. Yeah. I love Yarn career, career high in points. And the irony, and this is another side conversation, but if Kerfoot this summer signs the Yarn Crook contract, I think people automatically like him. Like, at, they'll be like, oh my God, they re signed Kerfoot. They're fucking stupid. And oh, wait, he took a million and a half dollar a year discount. Oh, okay, never mind. I like him. I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think his agent would allow him to do that. No. Oh, I but don't, we'll I don't see. see him getting more than three and a half. We'll I think it's going to be in that ballpark. We'll see how he does in the playoffs, right? Yeah. Like maybe, maybe he does the I'm Fernando Pisani uh, thing or the Matt Bolesky thing. The Matt Bolesky thing. Get ready, guys. You get ready for playoff curfoot. Oh, playoff curf. Yeah. <laughs> but your I'm point, so into it. Plurf. Your point Plurf. about there could be a scenario where Matthews, Tavares, and Willie and Mitch all uh, break their legs on day, game all one, right. Jesus. And, and they're out. You know, yeah. and, and Dubas gets his extension. But there's also a scenario where they play well and it's just not enough and they lose to Tampa. Like last year? Like last year. Like and 2019? In that scenario, there's a chance that oh. Brendan's like, I'm going to move on from Kyle Dubas. I have a, I have a question. Uh, do, did you have something you want to say there? No. Okay. I, don't, I, well, I know I opened my mouth to speak. I don't, I don't know how we got here. I'm glad we're having the conversation. <laughs> sure. but, but my initial conversation was merely going to be, and this does tie into Dubas, um... It was. It's about wool, and it's about move Samsonov. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Move, move Samsonov to the side. That was my fault. I asked no, about okay. Dubas. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> move Samsonov to the side here. We're talking about Matt Murray. We're talking about the goals allowed, and we're talking. We're looking at Joseph Wool, who played a great game yesterday, and obviously they're giving Samsonov some chance, some time off. He, his wife just had a baby. Like it's there's a lot going on in that guy's life. Um, I know they'll go into the playoffs with Samsonov-Murray. But my question to you is, if it was just about talent, 
if you were to able to see the overall, uh, the overall, you know, rating out of a hundred, like you can in NHL 2023, um, is who is in the playoffs if the best lineup is dressed? Is it Murray or is it Wolf? If it's fantasy video game hockey, you're going Samson off. Yeah, Wolf's probably like an 83, and Matt Murray's probably like an 82. That's pretty. I don't think he's been that bad. No, it, it, you gotta you gotta realize Who, we're eighty. Murray, Murray. I don't think he's been that bad. No, but like you need. I I still I stand by what I said. I think he's a perfectly backup fast backup. He makes too much. He's a perfectly fine backup backup. I think a lot of teams could have used him this year. Mm-hmm. He's, he's just a backup. A lot of teams with stinky goaltending this year. Just a backup pass backup. Um. The only scenario I could see where the it's a good phrase backup has backup. He is the only scenario I could see um, where Wool plays a playoff game is like what happened to the Oilers in the finals in '06. Their starter gets hurt, so in that case, it'd be Samson instead of Roll. Dwayne Rolls and all oh, that broke my heart. And then Ty Conklin goes in and stinks, and in that case, that would be Matt Murray. And so you replace him with. Does anyone remember? No. No. Juicy Markin. Oh. Yes, right. who I just, when I looked up to make sure his first name was Juicy, uh, he's the general manager of Saipa in the uh, SM Liga. Wow. I did not know And he's that. played in Stanley Cup games. That's pretty cool. Stanley yeah. Cup final game. They almost won. Dwayne Rollison, if they were in that, if he played that whole series, they win that series. 100%. Oh, they at very least win game one. They would have won the series. Where they blew a huge lead after he got hurt. Oh, Oilers fans. We got, oh, I'm just turning the knife. We got Connor Ingram last year. Like, it happens. Yeah, Steve like, was right. Oh yeah, that. and then he was wrong. <laughs> and then he wrong. Oh, and friggin' Drew texted me yesterday because the Coyotes were playing the Avs. He's like, "Man, this Connor Ingram guy." And I was like, oh, "That's what I was saying." That's what it I was had trying. One to... good game. It's, yeah. I will fight you. So, so all that said, like, I feel like this is the ideal situation. You want your young goalie pushing his way into the lineup, and the Leafs, the one that we criticized them before this season, and I think before last, the one thing they haven't been able to do is develop a goalie. And it I, seems like they might have one. I, I think, again, I've, I've said this for a while. People are sleeping on their organizational goalie depth. They just have a bunch of guys who are too young to be there yet. I've what said, good does that do them if Dubas is out the door? Before? Well, that's going to be a problem. But I've, I've said for, for at least a year now, they have so many darts. They're going to hit the board. I don't know if it'll be a bullseye, but it, it was always going to be, you know, could be Ian Scott. Whoops, that one missed. You know, it could be uh, Eric Shelger, and that one hit. It's not exactly a bullseye, but it's okay. Uh, it's Akumov, a Akumov, we'll see. Pexa, we'll see. Uh, uh, Hittleby, we'll we'll see. Joseph Wool, close enough to the middle. Twelve games in a row in in the AHL. Yeah. How far enough. back are you going? You're going to Justin Pogi was a it's, dartboard. You know? <laughs> well, uh, the last the last goaltender. They drafted and developed, and he had success with the organization. Was James Reimer? That dude was drafted in two thousand six. And what about Sh- Scrivens? Wasn't he around then too? Free agent signing. Okay. Oh well. Free agent signing. So, but it, I mean, it, does that count? I mean, if they drafted him and he played in the NHL, sure. I or mean, no, not drafted him. If they signed him, no whatever. one drafted him. Right? Well, then I think that counts. Yeah, yeah. If he signs from L- like L.A. and he played games there, then no. Yeah. <laughs> but well, but it Reimer was the first one. Since Felix Potvin, yeah, right. There was. I mean, Rask, they did a great they didn't job. Realize they hit with. Yeah, but. they didn't do. They did a great job developing Rask for the Bruins. Uh-huh. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, leads all drafted Leafs goalies and all time wins. Please kill. No way. I would. Of course he does. Is that a true story? Of course he does. Oh, yeah. That's so painful. <laughs> that's oh my agony. God. It's agony. Oh, it's all agony. drafted Leafs goalie in terms of like NHL wins with any team. Yeah, just in career wins. Yeah. Wow. That's a sad Look at that. Who's number two? Uh, I don't know. Why should be like Johnny Bauer? Probably Podfin. Honestly. A drafted Leaf goalie. Got it. Got to be Podfin. You would think. He had, a, he had a pretty long NHL career, even after uh, his time with the Leafs. Didn't win a lot, though. He's with the shitty Bruins and the shitty Islanders at so, that point. Well, they were about both in bad spots. While Jesse looks that up, signing Samson up. <clears throat> Seems like a no-brainer. And mm-hmm. He's an RFA. Yeah, that's great. And then Joseph Wool, um, he makes his full salary in the minors if you send him there, and also if you send him there, he has to clear waivers, which he super won't. So next year, it seems to be 
one of Samsonov or Murray. I assume Samsonov. Uh, with Joseph you mean Wolf. keeping Samsonov? Yeah, yeah. And then you got to find a home for Murray. Well, and you probably, I mean, knowing Kyle Dubas, uh, you know, if he's if he's able to, you you move Murray at the draft, and, and I think and, they can do it. Oh, I think they can at four million bucks. If it's like four point something, and it's only one year, the Sens were able to move him, uh, but they had to retain, and it was two seasons. But if Joseph Wool is your backup for less than eight hundred thousand dollars, you can afford to retain as well. Yeah, it's not ideal. You'd probably rather pay draft capital than do that. But you could do it. Yeah, absolutely. I think do you have the list, Justin. <laughs> I wonder yeah, if a team. I'm looking at. I it. hate to say this, but if you were going to go that far ahead in the future, and we shouldn't. Um, you know, you wonder about a team like Arizona that n- will need somebody to play there um, Man. and Man. will want draft capital. It's always in season. Like, in d- Arizona. Don't you, does it, isn't that where your mind instantly goes? And you know what's funny? Like, there was a time, uh, like about a year ago, where I was like, guys, we can't just keep coming up with the Coyotes in all these scenarios. And then they proceeded to trade for so many players who aren't ever. The Coyotes play for them. keep coming up with the Coyotes. I know, I know. Do, do, do you have? What do you have there, Jess? You look. I have. Serious. I have. I'm just looking at the list. It's it's um very compelling. Leafs uh, drafted goalies all time list. Uh, Tuukka Rask is number one in terms of career wins. He oh. picked up three oh eight. That is it in his career. That is outrageous. That's yeah. so that sad. is an outrageous stat. How did you? I know ruined that? my day. I don't uh, because people tweeted at me all the time. <laughs> oh, you guys want some more names? Any bad leaf oh. stat I know because I get inundated with it. So yeah, three oh eight. Tuukka Rask leads the list. List number two, Felix Potvin with two sixty six. Not bad. Uh, Paul Mateer. Ken uh, Reggett. Reg- Reggett. Oh, oh, Kenny Ken Reggett. Reggett. Yeah. Yeah. 225. He was mostly known for what? And I think the Flames too. Oh, yeah. 225. He's next. Then we... Big jump. Uh, James Reimer. 202. He's uh, he's fourth? Yeah, he's fourth on the list. That is pathetic. Mike Paul Mateer is fifth. 149. Then we get Ron Lowe at 102. Who? Uh, Damian Rhodes. I remember 90. him. Damian Rhodes. I, I, like, Dam- I liked him. I had a Damian Rhodes rookie card. I think I did too. Damian yeah, Rhodes is cool. 90. and He was good in, with Ottawa. So now we're not even at triple digits. No. No. Uh, 90 wins. Alan Bester yeah. is 73. Uh, who else we got? That's They're bad. not in order, so I'm just kind of scanning. That uh, is pathetic. 53 is the next on the list. Jeff Reese. Um, he was the backup to Felix Podman. I, for a while, yeah, <laughs> briefly. Like what, we what number is that? Kids. Seven or six? I don't know. That is. Like, I'm not even top This 10 is an yet. organization that's 106 wow. years old. They've, Think they've, about that. The organization is 106 years old, and the best guy that ever played for never played a game for them. Well, they're, they're best guys. Um, like Johnny Bauer, Turk Broda. Under, like I, I want to say, predate signings. the draft. Yeah, they were probably signings. Yeah, but Terry like Sacha. you have to go back that far even, to find some yeah, quality yeah, goaltenders, Plant, stuff like that. They were yeah. all yeah. Jacques Plant had a couple of good yeah. years in Toronto, like really good. Wow, wow. Like Reimer, how many years of his career has he even been like more than half the game started? Three. Two, maybe yeah, not a lot like that's oh shit that's wild man. yeah that's yeah. A, those are some crazy uh stats. james wow. reimer is second all time oh third all time in save percentage amongst uh drafted leafs goalies Who's number one uh number one is tuka rask number two joseph wall hey, yeah well <laughs> I and mean, like Bernier is what's, top what's 10. What's the minimum game? It's like, I don't know. No, no, no. no, 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 no. That's it also depends on the goalie. era you play. Yeah, drafted Leafs Dra- goalies. Bernier wasn't drafted a Leaf. Joseph Wall. Oh, right, right. Joseph Wall's number two all time. Because he's played like, what, 15 games? 922. I think. Oh, nine. actually, no. Joseph Wall would be number one. Uh, 922, Tuka Rask, and How many games? How many freaking games? Bum. Seven. Tuka Bum. Seven games. There <laughs> he should be is a 20 game minimum for that. No, you have to be. A, it has to be a twenty game minute. That's not fair. You know that means Garrett Sparks once led the Leafs in career save percentage, mm-hmm. and then he lost it. And then Eric Shelgren once led the Leafs in career save percentage because he also got a shutout in his first start. Um, do you guys remember when John Tavares was a NHL washout and wasn't worth his contract? I, he still is. 
Three points last night. What a bum. 15 playoff, sorry, 15 power play goals this year. 75 points already this year. Um, John Tavares is doing exactly what John Tavares was hired to do. Is he not? He, if you go and look at his stats, like throughout his career, he's one of the most money in the bank players, like since he was drafted. Captain consistency. Like it's just 80 points every year. He's 85 he, points. It's a, it's kind of funny that he's the captain because his numbers remind me a lot of Matt Sundin's actually. Who Sundin rarely got to that. 90 point. Like, yeah. He there, did it in Quebec with 100. Yeah. There were a but handful. That was also early. But yeah, yeah, there were a handful of seasons where you could point and go. Sundin had a great season here and here and here, where he was part of the elite. But for the most part, it's just 70, 80 points John every Tavares, single year. He's truly John Tavares in like the way he plays. He's Mr. Yeah. Consistency in his daily life and on the ice. He's the, the exact same. Why did so few people predict he would have a like a bounce back season uh, where he because wasn't I think of recovering? His age. It was his age. Yeah, but he wasn't recovering from yeah, a knee, neck, and head in. I think people back from 76 points. Well, that's another 70, thing, right? That was, that's games. what I kept saying last year. I'm like, I don't see what everybody's seeing here. He's still pretty darn good. How many goals? Last year, 27. Exactly. Let that, me, let that's me, why people were so down on him. 27 goals? He's, people were down on him. Yeah, 11 oh, million God. bucks. He will always oh, be associated ooh. with that number. He is That's almost exactly point a game every single year. Every and, and there, single no matter year. what amount of games he plays, he gets that many points he's, almost every year. And he's money in the bank to win more than like 52, 53% of his face offs, which is pretty good by NHL standards. He's been playing he does good. It. What, and also, when does John Tavares ever cause any shit? Like, there have been controversies around Matthews. There have been mm -hmm. controversies around Marner. There have been controversies about around William Nylander. The most we got out of John Tavares was that when they lost to Montreal, they went up to his cottage and they all talked about how angry they were about it. Yeah. That's it. Like, we've, we've, and everybody was like, well, I, I, well, you're not as mad as me in my living room. That's for sure. He, and I just, I, I he don't. He inadvertently got the NHL to uh, refuse to commit to the Olympics for a decade. Oh, because of his injury. <laughs> because of his but, knee. But other than that. But that's the Islanders' fault. Is it? I'm yeah, kidding. 100% is. Um, I think, I think. With Tavares, he's the perfect captain for Toronto because he's boring as shit. Mm -hmm. When he's mm -hmm. when you, when you when, I'm sure like talking to him like as a normal person, super fun. I'm sure he's a nice, really cool guy. But to the media, he's boring. He doesn't do anything that causes a scandal. You never hear anybody talking about him unless it was last year, which is the the narrative somehow developed that John Tavares was done. I am blown away with the season. I was blown away with the season that he had last year, coming off of that injury. But this year, I mean, they had him. Uh, they had him on the wing as soon as Ryan O'Reilly showed up. Didn't say a word. Like most guys would be like, what do you mean you're moving me off center? I'm the captain. He didn't do that. Oh, that's a good He's idea. like, oh, bring him in. Let's score. <laughs> the like, it's Matthews amazing. for captain thing looks kind of silly in retrospect. Um, it made sense at the time, but this, I still I still think you could make him captain this offseason. No. I think John made, Tavares is the perfect captain for the team. I think everything fine. you just said is so true. It was fine at the time, and then after it came out that he charge for something and kept it secret from the team. Yep. I think it made perfect sense. Do not give him the captain. Yeah. And I don't think CJ, anything's think, changed since then. I'm pretty sure CJ maintains that he his theory was that the Leafs were this close to offering Matthews the captaincy and then that came out. Oh, I don't believe them for a second when they said, oh no, it was always Tavares. No. Mm. It was going to be Matthews. I don't believe right? them for a second, but he seems to, it's great, but here's, here, so here's the thing. Since we're on the uh, results o'clock thing, what winning has Tavares brought to Toronto? I'm the guy who I'm the guy who brought up Tavares and complimented Tavares. Now I'm turning heel. Open the phone lines. Yeah, that's what, what that do you sounds think? like. Call star five, whatever. Um, uh, no, what do you what do you honestly think? Like, what is is there anything to while well, a captain gets them to win? Like what Nathan McKinnon did with the Colorado Avalanche, what Sidney Crosby did with the 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 Penguins. Um, you know those great leaders. Is there anything to, we got to see you win something here? I think the big difference is with Crosby and Ovechkin, they were the best players on their team. Uh, Tavares is one of the best players. He's a really good player. Would you put him fourth? <laughs> Matthews, and Marner, Nylander. Before, before producer Drew smacks you across the face, Gabriel Landeskog is the captain in, Sorry. in Colorado. Yes. I, I make that mistake like, all the time. I do too, yeah. Landis Cog absolutely is the captain. My bad. My yeah. Bad. But, uh, you know, 
we weren't really talking about like Stamkos' legacy and Landeskog's legacy. But with like Crosby had to win that cup. Ovechkin especially had to win had that to cup win that because cup. it was later in his career. But he was always his team's best player. Mm-hmm. I feel like Tavares doesn't get as much heat because he might be the fourth best forward. I'm I'm still gonna say because he's center, he's at least third. Um, that's no disrespect to Willie. Um, but I mean, look at the elite talent. Fourth, third, and fourth sounds like an insult, and then you look at the 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 competition, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh. okay. <laughs> There's a reason they call him the Big Four. They like alternate who's the best. Um, like, is there any argument Marner's been the best and most consistent this season? No, Mitch Marner's been the MVP of the Leafs this year. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, who Absolutely. has the best high end talent? Matthews. Matthews. Yeah. Like when he's at his best, it's Matthews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, the, the way you outline it, it makes the beginning portion of this podcast even more bleak. Like, how haven't these guys won? They're so good. There's four of them They're who so are good. elite players. I saw somebody, and they alternate. You're so you're so right about them just taking turns about being the elite one. I saw somebody tweet, um, you know, after the discussions that were that went on the last couple of weeks about you know did the Leafs get worse after the trade deadline or whatever, which is just is such an unbelievable argument to me. But people are like, listen, Engvall, Sandine gone. The all these guys, Ryan O'Reilly, Nolachari, whatever, blah, blah, blah. None of it matters because these four people, Nylander, Marner, Matthews. Uh, and Tavares are going to be the reason they win or lose. Mm-hmm. If they show up, the Leafs should win. And they did last year, and they should have won. <laughs> and, what do you want? And, if it, and that's, that's, the, that's just the reality, though. It's those four guys Man. that are going to win. You're, the win, Leafs win it. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, uh, the we're losing it by them. Yeah, I know. I know. It's Because it does break your brain. And that's why I think you make a good point about maybe front office's brains just snapped in half. When they lose... Uh, if they were to lose uh, the first round, I I always think of like, okay, what's that LFR? Because that's a high oh. pressure LFR. It's I'm in a room alone and I feel just thousands of people like burning into me. Like, where's the video, Steven? And I'm just like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird feeling when you're alone in a room and, you're, and everyone's just Speak, funny boy. And <laughs> come on, screamy man. What's it going to be today? Say the line, Bart. What do you got this year? Say I watch the one line. video annually. It's this one. Give me the shot, Freud. And I'm like, okay. I, what do you say? Like, the there were there were years in the past where you could just have unbridled rage. Then there was the Habs one that I think was just... Ugh. Air out of the balloon. It was anger, but... It just developed into 25 minutes of uh, exasperation and just... During one of the bleakest moments that we'll ever live through in our years on this earth. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> a bleak loss during a bleak third wave of the pandemic. Yeah. Great. A, like a, a playoff beard that quickly turned into a depression beard that I shaved and then grew back into another depression. And beard. you were sleep deprived because you had a kid a month ago. Oh, it's just, like, no, that was the Columbus. Oh, month. sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm mixing up. The that two. Was, now, oh, now I'm blending 2020 can't, can't and 2021. To, wait, well, what was it? Eight months for them to lose in oh, five gosh. games. It's okay. They look good in the warm up game though. Mikhail's going to win the cons. My fuck. Um, I don't know if they were to get eliminated this year. I have no idea what that video is going to be like. Because I'm going to be like, I don't fucking know. Well, you know that either, <laughs> either, no matter how you feel, you'll be wrong. I know. Because there'll be people that are mad. There'll be people that'll be resigned. There'll be people that'll excuse it. And if you're some of those things, one of those things, one of the other things, somebody's going to have a big problem with that. Because they'll be like, how come you couldn't possibly see it my way? And I think, I think the reality is, and if you're the Leafs and you're watching, win the series, please. Don't put Steve in that position. Fucking just win. <laughs> just win. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which is... Be the worst team. Get out shot 40 to 20 every game and win. I don't give a shit. Yeah. yeah. Results a clock. I think... I don't care how you win. I think... I think that's the funniest part. Is that like... What, here's how I keep thinking it's going. This is my messed up Leafs brain. Is that if the Leafs lose this one and they bring in somebody else and they have to do like a quick retool or something like that, It'll be, and they finish like seventh in the conference in a couple of years. That'll be the series they win. And what what are the sheer odds? Like, let's say they trade Nylander. What are the sheer odds they win that trade? 
Zero. On zero. paper. Almost no, zero. Zero. You don't win a trade like that. Right? So, oh, boy. What day is today? Today is March 27th. We, we're not faced with this issue yet. Mm-hmm. 17th. I, 17th. April 17th April is when 17th it all starts. Game one of the NHL playoffs. Four days after my birthday. And I think That's we're about all going to be just <laughs> Eight days after Jesse's birthday. Nine days. Sorry. I don't, I don't think anybody marks their calendars based on... I think they do. Your, yours is, I believe, the celestial. Send year. us the picture. <laughs> Send us the picture of Jesse's birthday. I put it in night. my Google calendar. And Adam's <laughs> on Jesse's the third birthday today. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think that it's going to be uh, it's going to be fascinating. I can't wait, uh, and I hope that they don't put you in that position. Now, um, I don't know the last thing here, and we can't play the clip because it's a Sportsnet clip. But have you seen? Boo. I know. Boo them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, have you seen? Uh, it's just they they own the rights and we don't. Have you seen the the shot of Marner's popping the puck off his head last night? Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, is uh, that not the most Mitch Marner thing you've ever seen in your life? Kevin Lankin should really go to prison for, for stopping Yard Crook. Yeah, he should. I, that was a good save though. So I I want it was I want you to tell me if I'm wrong. Because mm-hmm. yesterday in the LFR I said if that had gone in, which it obviously didn't, but use your imagination. If that had gone in, that's more impressive than the mission. No. I don't know. I've I seen know. a bunch of players pull off the Michigan. I've never seen anyone pull that shit off. Is it legal to pull it off? Yes. It is legal. So you can't the If he were to just if it cuz it skimmed off his head if it went into the net. I don't know. No, but he direct he directed he the directed puck. it. Yeah. Cuz there's precedent for this. Andrew Shaw scored a playoff double OT winner. Oh my against the Ducks with his head. He went wham. And they reviewed it for like an hour. But <laughs> it wasn't an hour, but yeah. it was I remember it being a long review because I think the refs were like, We're in the rule book. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I'm positive this is against the rules. I just don't know which one. And they eventually found it. You're not allowed to do that. The uh I'm sorry. But it's like kicking. Bro. You're not allowed to kick it into the net, but you can kick it to your teammate. The mm-hmm. broadcast did a fantastic job. Uh, pulling up the bunch of clips from people. Head, How did they find that? Whoever that was in the truck at Sportsnet uh, last night, the fantastic job. You'd have to just do that from memory. Yeah. You'd have to be like, encyclopedic. So they yeah. had like they had like three different ones they showed like directly after the commercial break that happened and Sean McKenzie That's was amazing. talking about it. Yeah. it was, Andrew it was, Shaw. Uh, I don't remember the Nathan Gerby, I think. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I trust your brain. Yeah, I can't even remember I don't from know last their night. names. Yeah. These guys are pulling it out of thin air. <laughs> right? Yeah. So wow. they did that and then they had they had them explain on the broadcast that yeah, you can't direct the puck with your head uh into the net. So it wouldn't have counted. But like that's so circumstantial. Like for you to do that within a game, you have to get lucky in that instance and be like, Okay, I'm gonna headbutt it here. The puck's gotta be coming above your head, you gotta be in the right position. Yeah. I think the Michigan's more impressive. Like Ken Johnson doing it for Columbus over the weekend is more impressive than that. I like, I got to say, what I like about Mitch <laughs> is that he is everything that I thought Kyle Wellwood was going to be. <laughs> I thought Kyle Wellwood was this like water bug type player with, no. who was super creative. He did stuff. And I remember Don Cherry like lighting him up for something small. Like he lifted, you know, he, you he know, when he put it through his leg, he put it through his legs. And Don Cherry's like, oh, I don't like that stuff. And, and Pat and, Quinn and didn't like it either. Pat Quinn didn't like it either because they're old school hockey guys and you don't do that. I love that Mitch Marner doesn't have any limitations to his game. If it's legal, it's possible. And there's and he's the guy that like he and like Zegris and there's guys around the league that are just they're just creative. It's so creatively open to them on what you can and can't do in a hockey game. And I love that. Uh Kyle Wellwood, um Yeah, I think video games sometimes screw up the perception of oh, a player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The video games made him so much like Faster than he should have been. Yes. Every little guy in every NHL game was just fast. It's all Cliff Merrick. They just, they uh, just Cliff running. Merrick's Vatos yeah. default fast. Oh, he's little. Yeah. Paul yeah. Korea. Video games ruin small guys. Yo, Steve yeah. Korea. Steve Korea was a oh. rocket ship. Both Giantas. Yeah. Tiomo Rutu was would just drop these big. Tuomo Rutu, Tuomo. excuse me, used to just drop these freaking hits on people, and they're. I remember the the game was like he's the best player outside of the NHL, and then he got into the NHL. He's like, okay, he's not that good. <laughs> There's a reason he was outside the NHL. The other route, yeah. The the other. I he was better he was, than Yarko, though. I thought he was the route. He had more high end talent than Yarko, yes, but yeah. he didn't play as many games. Absolutely, absolutely. Um. Anyway, I wanted to I wanted to kind of uh, I wanted to hit on those points, and then the last thing, the continuation goal, Matthews against Carolina. Now, can you imagine the Leafs win that game? 
the outcry from people about the continuation goal. Because I don't think a lot of people had seen one of those before. It's, uh, well, I hadn't seen one go in favor of the Leafs. And explain what it is, too, because it's essentially the ref blew it dead too early. The ref blew it dead too early. He thought the puck was covered. It wasn't. And he uh, wasn't in a position to make the call. He was behind the net anyway. Which is going to happen. It happens. It does. Okay. It happens. I'm I'm willing to forget it. Um, I mean, well, <laughs> Not for me to forgive. I don't know if Carolina Hurricanes fans are willing to forgive it. But um, uh, he's shooting it basically as the play is being blown dead. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's made contact with the puck yet. But, like, that's a play that shouldn't have been blown dead that Matthews is in the middle of a shooting motion with. He scores. They review it. And, I mean, at the end of the day, is that not what should have happened? Like, regardless of whether or not the whistle was blown, it shouldn't have been. Right. Right. So they the, got the call right. Yeah. I like, I know that's not how you're supposed to interpret rules. You're supposed to be like, was the rule followed? But I look at it and go, that's what should have happened. Was the NHL game served? Right. Was, was the entertainment served? Mm. I think so. Yeah. Justice served. Just. Um, I didn't okay. want to use that word, but like, yeah, justice kind of served. Now, you wouldn't have seen this uh, during the hockey night in Canada intermission, um, but uh, Brian Burke came on. He gave a pretty rousing address. And it, you know what? It, it, it's nice to see somebody from inside the game, especially somebody who's so intimately involved. And I know there's President. been a lot, of, a lot of complaints about you can, you can play and, and sort of the, the perceived lack and real lack of... Um, uh, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but it just seems like they've let the community down a little bit. But Brian Burke coming response. in... Response, I think, yeah. Uh, a, a willingness to kowtow to things that they perhaps shouldn't. Uh, but Brian Burke... Um, came on and said some pretty interesting things. And I think among them, a lot of what a lot of people said last week, which was uh, pride jerseys are not about you endorsing a lifestyle. They're about you saying to somebody who is a part of that community, you're welcome at the rink. And the thing is, we can say it, you can tweet it, whatever. But we're not in major positions of power in hockey. I can't make the Pittsburgh Penguins wear that jersey. Brian Burke can Brian Burke can say to Sidney Crosby, you guys got to put on that jersey. And, or, or, and welcome our fans. And not, not even make him not wear make him, it. Not make him. Make him understand There's why it's word. important to right. wear it. He carries respect within the game. He's friends with Bettman. Right? Like, this is a guy who... And has been for decades. Decades. Has been in the game as a player. In a, like, Lou Glamorello coached him in college. <laughs> That's how deep Brian Burke's roots run in the NHL. So to have that come from a source inside the game was great. I thought he was extraordinarily eloquent. Mm -hmm. uh, made to, you got to see it. It's yeah. a fantastic interview. Uh, I think Ron fumbled a couple questions, if I'm being honest. if And if Ron were being honest, I think he fumbled a couple questions that people were like, come on. But Brian, Brian ran you through why this matters, why this shouldn't be a big deal to the players, and how his frustrations and why he doesn't understand why they're doing this. And I think that um, him coming out there and resetting from inside the NHL, here's why we do Pride Nights. And then saying to people like ourselves, like, you know, you who are probably listening going, he's like, listen, we have 32 Pride Nights happening this year. Don't let the people that are, you know, sucking up most of the oxygen ruin the fact that 32 NHL teams have a Pride Night, that there is progress being made. It's slow. It's painful. But there is progress being made here. And there are people inside who want this to happen. And I think that was the most important message is, when you're talking to the community and, um, uh, and, and you hear somebody inside the game say, we want this to happen. We want you here. We want this to change. And here's why. And here's why. I think it means a lot. So I want to give a yeah. big shout out to Brian on that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he did that. Yeah, absolutely. I think you'll be blown away with the interview. It's like he just, I mean, Brian's a great guest. It's a shame, it's a shame he's not on TV anymore. <laughs> I, well, it he like, was then. His talent's wasted in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I always, uh, his, his, he should be on the air. I always forget to catch up on the hockey night stuff because I go straight from the stream into the LFR. And yeah, no one's. No and then one's I'm tired and that. want to go to bed. And, That's what Jesse and I are for. Yeah, yeah. We're no, he did. He did a fantastic job. Like, if if we're nitpicking, like how it went down, I wish it was during first intermission. Agreed. You know, yeah. you maybe you, you probably just you can move the panel a little, like cut the panel in was half. Was it second? It was second intermission, and it was uh, after thirty two. After thirty two thoughts yeah. as well, and yeah, Ron McKinnon, he fumbled a couple questions there. Um, Brian Burke, he he nailed his words were were beautifully said, and having a person like that 
in a position of power saying those things on the biggest night in hockey it means a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll see how the rest of it goes. And I want to I want to do a big shout out to um, uh, uh, Connor Murphy as well, because I know the Blackhawks kind of nixed their pride night uh, or, or peeled back on it. And he was still very much like, let's know we're pushing for this. And there was social media that went out. And I think that that was that was awesome to see. Um, and it's nice to see the pushback. It's nice to see players coming out and being individuals and saying, no, 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 this is what we want. If they can be individuals that way, we can, we can also come out and say, no, no, we are completely on side and, and this is what we want. I love that. And being passionate about it, right? Yeah. Like not just going through the motions. Okay. Like it, I, again, I, th- I think, um, it's a lack of understanding. Yes. Really. And, uh, that's, that's being proactive. Right? Not just, yeah, okay, I'll throw it on. And throwing it on is fine. It's mm-hmm. good, but you can take it a step further. Now, to uh, uh, to move on from this, right-hand turn here, guys. A Toronto hockey club has won a championship. Oh, yeah. 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 Has won a cup. Has won a cup, baby. The Isabel Cup, Toronto Six. Congratulations to them. What a big, big game. And I was talking to uh, Richard Coffey, who does the, um, the, uh, the PHF, um, social media, he said the game was electric to be at. He says it's some of the most fun he's ever had at a hockey game, which I thought was really cool. At the, at the mall? At the mall, down at the mall in Arizona, which is great. And what a game. And both both of those teams are expansion teams, by the way. Yep. And so Toronto, I think, has been in the semifinals twice and then finally into the finals and wins. Teresa Vanasova. OT. OT winners. So for a championship. Dealing it. Yeah. And sniping it—that's that's it's that's, actually a nasty, nasty shot. Oh, you yeah. can always tell from the goaltender's reaction where they're just like fuck. Like you, you can you can tell, and she had to like dial back her usual reaction because it's not just you allowed a goal. It's oh shit, the season's over. Yeah, championship's over. I mean, it's you always feel bad for the opponent in one of those situations, but that's after you're really happy with your team. <laughs> Well, and isn't that the way a final should be? It's the two yeah. best teams. Whitecaps played a great game. The Six played a great game. And it's decided not even within the game. You have to go to extra game to get it happening. Extra like, game. It's, it's like, uh, have you, by the way, it made me think, have you guys ever won anything in overtime? In any of the games? NHL 22 game in Steve's basement with my friends. Oh, so that was the fun. best reaction yeah. I've ever. That yeah, was no. we were we were we were down early. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. happened? Who were we playing? We were the. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember the second round. At all. We were like the Leafs, and I think we were playing like Chicago or Detroit when they would have been good. And then we no no that would no Detroit. It had to be I don't Detroit because I have Eastern. no idea. And we were we were down. Jesse was sitting on the far end of the seventh couch, game, and he scored. And he got up and ran, and I got up and ran after him, and you got yeah. up and ran after both of but us. But it wasn't for the champion. It wasn't for the Stanley Cup. Second, round. Was, Second was, round. Yeah, it was to get. No, I think it was semifinals. And look how much I think it was that to get to the final. That was years ago. Yeah. And that was not real life. And look how much it <laughs> still means to us. Yeah. That's got to be seven years. And Vanasova did oh, that in real life. Yeah. Right? yeah. I also I remember. 24. And they were down three two in the third period. It was a yeah. comeback win by the the it's six. Just fun. Yeah, I I remember in house league house league hockey we won the championship in in the uh, in overtime, and I house I league hockey house league hockey and I will never it was the it might be one of the greatest moments of my life oh, I higher I, higher level of hockey than I ever uh, well won in it was so. crazy because the, at that point too at no point are you allowed to take off your gloves or your helmet but at that point it's all it's confetti confetti and man that was fun that one was of, fun. one of the best wins of my life uh, I think it's called the Burnsy Cup. Oh, <laughs> Steve and Jesse's nah. hockey. That was, that was the that worst was game of, of my life. <laughs> eight, eight, four, zero goals by your. Uh, line. I think it was eight, four, five, nothing. Oh, we my were only like a minus line. six, minus five. No. <laughs> Who? Uh, I'll never forget that, Matty. You, you watch. <laughs> Who tackled uh, Van, uh, Vanisova? Like from the from the Toronto Six in the uh, in the celebration. Oh what player? Someone like completely just, just like. <laughs> Like Goldberg speared her. <laughs> You're next. Like just no. Let's say we find the footage. Yeah, we'll we'll find the footage. That is funny. Yeah, it was one of those where I'm like, they won. Oh shit. Is she okay? She's fine. Yeah. They won. <laughs> That's happened before. I feel like it happened in baseball, where like one of the pla- you know how they they oh, yeah, around yeah. the plate. 
But guy like snapped a tendon. In Radulov his uh, knocked Jason Arnott out cold. Oh yeah! Look did. at this. Whoa! <laughs> What's the number? I think it's sixteen. Twenty six. Oh, yeah. six. There's I'd, six. Well, them. it's just uh, <laughs> look, look at all that. It's a good hit. That's oh, gotta be a good, good hit. hit. But Vanisova, she almost keeps her balance. Vanis, no, her head almost bounces off the oh, ice. I know. This is this or, is but, why. Remember when Willie speared uh, Henrik Lundqvist? Lundqvist? Yeah, he could have like snapped him. the Hockey Hall of Fame goaltender's ankle. Like, so here's okay. Let's break down this play. Here's where Vanisova gets it wrong. She stops. You don't stop. You make the team chase you. <laughs> you make them chase you, and you go to the board so that at least they're slamming you into the boards, and they can't put all their weight on you. But as soon as you get tackled to the ground, you're done. She, she's out four to six weeks with celebration. Oh, man. What a great win. That was great cool. win. Very, very cool. Look, very cool. Oh, look at this. Cool. Snipe, and then watch this. 16 tucks the shoulder. Here we go here. Rawr! Tucks the shoulder and jumps. First of all, five in a game. You left your feet. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. Amazing. I, I like that they do three on three. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and they're, they're, the NHL is always so concerned about finishing their games on time. Uh, why don't you just go three on three? Would you guys do in the playoffs? In the playoffs? Hell, yeah. Why? I, I kind of like it. Ugh. You know what I like? I like five on five <laughs> for 20 and then four on four for 20 and then three on three for 20. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind that at all. People be like, "It's not real hockey." I did. I didn't. Yeah, hate neither it. is staying up till one a.m. Yeah, <laughs> that's not fucking real hockey. That's real. That's real suckage. Just finish the game. No, I didn't hate it. Like I wasn't like upset. I wasn't like they should be playing five on five. No, I, I was watching this. It's three on three. I want to see the stars and you're rolling stars. That's fine. I don't know if this makes sense. In a series, I want to see five on five. Mm. In a winner take all, I want to see three on three. Does that make sense? No, you got to pick one. Oh, sit, you're sitting on a fence right now. I would. It's it's nice how's, up here. How's your butt? I get to be as tall as you. Yeah, but your butt probably hurt. Yeah. What about your butt? Got a fence post up there. Your butt ski. It's all yeah. that. Uh, it's all that weight on my uh, generative discs <laughs> hurting <laughs> up here. Guys, if I told you that Dave Scott was retiring, what would you say? Oh, thank goodness. I. It's, <laughs> it's a shame because I really am a fan of his burgers. Dave Scott. I'd say uh, Steve. Or is that Dave Thompson? You're going to give Lindros a call? Ask him if he's oh, going to be... Oh, Dave Scott from the Flyers! So if you remember last week, I told you a story <laughs> that Dave Scott, Eric, who is the Comcast CEO for the Flyers, is retiring in April. Don't that just came it. out today. No, don't text <laughs> don't, Eric why right not? now. What are you going to text? So, oh are you the God. president of the Flyers? <laughs> Respond Y for yes. <laughs> When you say no, it means yes. Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> are you, Eric, are you president Circle of the Flyers? Y. Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> so, so Dave Scott, if you if you need to be caught up, and the reason I brought that up is I wanted to see who who amongst us remembers Dave Scott. Brought him up last week because we've been talking about a little bit about the Flyers management structure. Now they have a president CEO who would have been Dave Scott. They have Paul Holmgren, Bobby Clark, and Bill Barber, who are old guys who used to play there. And they have a succession of general managers and a failing hockey club right now. And what's been interesting is that, and Fridge, Fridge brought this up on his podcast, so I'm going to quote them, is that when, Phil, when Flyers management, uh, when they agree on a decision, apparently what they were doing under Chuck Fletcher was, if okay, like we all get together in a room. Maddie's here, Jesse's here, Steve's here, I'm here, everybody's here, Justin's here, Drew's here. We all make a Woo! decision collectively together. And we're like, we're all agreeing on this, right? And, they, and we go, right. And then Steve's the GM. And he's like, okay, we're going forward with it. And then everybody leaves the room. And they text people around the league going, wow, this is such a bullshit. This, this is really what we're stupid. Doing. They give away. Uh, this is what was happening in Philadelphia. Crazy so Dave crazy. Scott goes around Holmgren, Barber, and Bobby Clark and hires Danny Briere, who's been the assistant general manager for a while, has been you know working his way up, and doesn't ask those three guys, the three wise men. Uh, we should call them the three not wise men. No. You know what I'm oh, whoa, whoa, that's whoa, great. Whoa. Oh, whoa. that's anyway, a good one. Anyway, now he's retiring. So it's literally, he's like, here's your GM. I'm out. And so, so my question is this, is he actually retiring or did he have retirement foisted upon him Ooh. based on the decision that he made? Yeah. It seemed like it was time to go. Mr. Scott. 
But he's the he seems to be the guy with any sense in the room. He seems to be the guy that's no, like, not with how the, the organization guy. has been run. You know, if he if he's been he hasn't been able to like get rid of the other guys. Exactly. If he's been forced to make decisions um, based on the old Flyers guys, what they want to do, and he hasn't had any control, then like what's going to change? No, you got to get rid of the problem. I'm trying to look up Dave Scott age. Oh, no, no. He's retirement age. They all are at that. Well, age. this is what I'm saying, because so Dave Scott, the has, second I'm able to retire, I will. Scott I has been, served as like, Flyers chairman and governor since 2013. That's, so that's and what do you got to show for it? Tells me nothing. Well, the team hasn't been like the team was really good then. They were really good in twenty. That's a he's got a nice tie. You can afford to retire. Well, if you're the chairman of an NHL organization for ten years, you should be able to retire unless uh, you've been obnoxious with your spending. Also, uh, Eric Lindros is going to be here in five minutes. He says he has an announcement. Oh <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I like when you're naming people that are here. That was very hype. Well, yes. there are people that are here. Steve's here. Justin's here. And they all Drew's betrayed here. us. And the Tin Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was very... Look at it. Look at us. Right. Hey, it's cool. Look at but us. But I just thought, I thought, okay, that's very interesting. The Philadelphia Flyers continue to be the best story in the NHL that not enough people are paying attention to. They have to exclusively make trades with the Calgary Flames for maximum silly goose. Why do you say that? Because they're both silly geese. Well, they are silly geese. I actually have a Calgary Flames story if you want me to send it to you. Or show you. Yeah, I got a good one. Do we have um, time? Oh, yeah. No, we got time. We're making time. We're in our brand new studio, Steve. We're not just going to cut out of here early. Okay. So, so, so we're just going to do Jesse, nothing but three-hour podcast? Jesse, I sent you a video. Sorry, Maddie. Don't play it yet. Okay. I'm uh, sure you wanted to leave at some point. No, I, I want to. <laughs> Steve's just trying to beat the traffic home. He's like, oh, if I leave after a certain time. I need to leave. <laughs> I do. If I don't leave, I do. We're fucked. <laughs> oh, um, it's it's kind of late. Is it? No. It's but. not. Come <laughs> on. Now, I can I tell you something stupid? I was... Um, You're Adam? Yeah. Uh, that. But this morning at 5 a.m. when I'm leaving for work, I'm like, you know, I, uh, I don't need my laptop today because I will um, go to the office where we are and there will be a computer there, which is my desktop computer. But of course, being the idiot, I didn't realize that I, oh yeah, can't bring the desktop computer up here. <laughs> I need to bring my laptop, which is why I'm using my phone. So annoying. So here's something Smart Julian McKenzie wrote for uh, The Athletic. And Julian, low-key, if you're a Flames fan or if you're not a Flames fan, has been writing some wild stuff about the Flames Having right now. Having himself a time. And, and the thing is, is that it's not wild as in he's making it up. It's wild as in I can't believe this existed and how is nobody talking about this. So Michael Backlund played his 900th career game and they did... Uh, Julian did sort of a backstory and how it wasn't a an backland easy story. A hey, backland, hey, hey. Hey. Uh, oh, because of his name. Yes. Uh, uh, does backland remind you of how painful your back is, or uh, a little, a little bit? Now he said the number eleven has stuck with backland. Why? Why number eleven? Because then GM Daryl Sutter. Oh, because Daryl Sutter was the GM of the Flames ten years ago or fifteen years ago, and is now the head coach. Uh, Daryl Sutter gave it to him in 2010. And this is because Sutter wanted Backlund to seem taller with vertical numbers. His number had been number 60, but he thought that the 1-1 one, one made him seem taller on the ice. You're making that up. That is a Julian McKenzie. You should read the article. You're, you made that up. Julian's on fire lately. Julian made that up. I don't know if Julian made that up. You You're in Julian cahoots to make that up. up. Isn't that the most unbelievable? Should I call him and get him on the show right now? If you want to. Julian, is that? Are you fucking serious, <laughs> Jesse? You're, you're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. That's what. Yeah. I think they. I. I'm gonna go out in a limb guy, and say they should fire him. So don't. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember back in the day we used to be like literally anyone could be an NHL GM? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. There it is. Literally everyone can be a general, a general manager. Don't ever second guess yourself. Don't you ever for a minute take yourself out of the race before the starting gun. You can be an NHL GM. Start today. Start today. You don't even need to be like a soccer coach to coach a soccer team. Or like you could be the ball boy and coach another soccer team. Mm -hmm. That's Ted Lasso. I don't know if you picked up on that. the plot of an Stop actual it. show. But dude, that's... I just thought you'd find that funny. 
<laughs> I just think it's funny how. Um, now, no, uh, I, no. <laughs> I want to say that uh, uh, the other thing we saw this weekend is a couple to cross checks to the face. If you remember last year, Matthews got two games for cross checking Rasmus Dahlin in the top of the shoulder. It ran up the shoulder and hit him in the face. Yeah. So it counts as a cross check to the face. So he rightly got two games for it. Yes, deserve deserve Earned. two games. But now, because it's not the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, when you get cross-checked in the face, you get one game. Can you play the video? Because this is Mike Hoffman on Instagram. So I've gotten a two-game suspension for cross-checking a guy in the back of the helmet. A full-blown intentional cross-check to the face. One game. <laughs> hmm. So, so got- I, I went and found his uh, two-game suspension. Oh, you did? He cross-checked Logan Couture right in the back of the head. So his his two game suspension was earned. Sure, I, I, I don't, don't think he's complaining about that. I no, think he's going. Yeah, okay. I agree. So what's weird is what I was trying to look up. Maybe you can find it uh, faster than I can on my phone. Joel Edmondson cross checked Zach Hyman in the head. I think that was this season. And who did? Joel Edmondson cross checked Zach Hyman in the head. And I remember the reaction at the time was, "Oh well." games we know that because that's the precedent so Matthews did it it was two games Hoffman did it it was two games and I think Edmondson got two games because there was no reason not to give him two games yeah here it is he got five you got five games Edmondson got five Oh, five in a game, five minutes in a game. Was <laughs> yeah. like, five. Like, uh, I'm like, what? Wow. Yeah, that, that was a lot of games. Yeah, for some reason, when I typed it in, I only found Edmonds is not ejected. He's not, he's not a no, leaf. There it is. Yeah. So, he's a leaf, it's five games. I don't know what he ended up getting. But um, what I, I find it very strange that the precedent for a cross check to the helmet is two games, but flush to the face, that's. Ah, well, and, and so I wanted to start that with, with the Mike Hoffman thing because we were talking a little bit earlier about it's nice to see NHL players come out and be individuals. Yeah. Mike Hoffman came out and finally did that. And was and, and, magically not fine. Well, not yet. Not yet. And, and I, I, I also want to say this. How long is it before George Peros is legitimately in the conversation to be a general manager in the NHL? You laugh. The Flames need a guy. Look at the people or who have will. gone through that, that role. All of them, all of them end up managing NHL teams. Shanny, Brian Burke, uh, who was the last guy? Uh, head of the Department of Player Safety. Uh, Pronger, wasn't it? Yeah, Pro- was it Pronger? It might have been, yeah. I mean, like, it, was, it, it wasn't very long. Right, and I think, like, George, is, George Peros is not a stupid man. And oh. that is how you do it. If you want to, you got to work two, three years at the Department of Player Safety, whatever. But... Yeah, but what if you did a good job also? I, I have to say that I agree with you. I don't think, even by the low standard set, like I thought Shanny was the high watermark in terms of player safety. He was the one who introduced the videos. They hate progress. He was the one, well, Not, they, they, that shows back. in the emails, right? Dial it back. I, he, he was the one that actually set a precedent and stayed to it. Yep. And then he became president of the Leafs. Yep. George Peros, by the way, in the next season or two, you watch. He's going to start to be mentioned as an NHL general manager candidate. And I'm, I'm, I, you, you might be going, what? No, you're crazy. Look. Look at the history. That's what this job is. This job is you have to eat shit for three to five years, and then you can be a GM in the league. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to work your way up through the OHL and then into the AHL or the ECHL and then the NHL, which could take a lot longer. It's like That's what they're doing here. They're I, grooming him. I I agree with you that that's probably the way this ends. And also, he's been in this role for longer than most people are. I'm trying to think of the last guy to be in the role as long as him. Can you not find it? The, he wasn't. I don't think he was suspended. Well, no wonder. Because you yeah. type in Joel Edmondson's suspension and it never happened. No. So, so he wasn't. Which, that makes zero sense. So, it, here, here's what I'm saying. You can't complain about the Matthews two-game suspension because Hoffman... I think Hoffman happened first. Hoffman got two as well. Sure. Cross check to the helmet. You can't do that. I don't care if it wrote up the shoulder. You can't do that. Fine. Because at very least, you're sticking to a precedent. Sure. But now the precedent is I mean, get a guy in the team. It's fine. One game. 
fine. Well, if you if it means that if you go into the playoffs and you cross check, check someone in the face, you won't get a suspension. Yeah, no, you won't because Jesse found dude Joel Edmondson, and again it's Joel Edmondson. You have to go back and watch it. The game one, I think it was against the Habs, was really chippy and it was really nasty. And Wayne Simmons was at the forefront of it and he initiated some of it. Edmondson cross checks this dude right in the head and neck five thousand and this is the thing the reason i say you wouldn't get a suspension for it along those lines is because uh in the playoffs uh one game counts as two regular season games okay can we stop that goofy bullshit that's what that that's how they weighed it that's the one precedent they'll stick to to quote the great jim carrey stop breaking the law asshole <laughs> I don't care if it's the playoffs. That's if what you they do. cross check someone in the head, whether it's in the teeth where it really fucks you up or in the helmet where it fucks you up less, but is twice the punishment for some reason. I mean, they're both bad. You shouldn't do either of them. It, it should be two games. The precedent is it's two games. Unless uh, an executive in the NHL's kid is on uh, is in the Stanley Cup final, then it's four games. What's that? <sighs> Tell the audience. When Aaron Rome laid out Nathan Horton and it was a bad hit. It was a bad hit. He got four games in the Stanley Cup final. That Wait, what what now what's Nathan Horton's connection? Nathan no, Nathan Horton was the receiver of the hit. That's I know, but why the, oh, why the, was it four games? Because uh Nathan Horton was on the same team as Gregory Campbell, who's Colin Campbell's child. And I <laughs> that suspension. You you can make the argument that that suspension is the way it should be, and that's fine. I'll I'll hear that argument. That argument makes so much sense, or so much more sense that like if you go and look at all the suspensions from like the recent history of the Stanley Cup Final, it's a complete outlier. It it doesn't belong there. One of these things is not like the other. And it's because that's the only time it ever happened. Yeah, and four that, games. And what's that? Twelve years ago, uh, Gregory Campbell hasn't been an NHL player in a long time. Twelve years ago. Yeah, and and it's um, it's you know they say uh, playoff games it's like double the length, right? So a, a two game suspension in the regular season is, is one is one game in the playoffs. So what is four length. games in the Stanley Cup final? In the regular season. It's about 12. 20% like of the season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's about 12. It's a total outlier. Anyway, that's that's getting away from the conversation. Dude. Yeah. Listen. And that's not the only cross check to the face. There was a couple this weekend, and it's just interesting the way that they are choosing to handle or, in some cases, not handle it. Well, and and I feel like I've brought this up recently, and, but it like, fits perfectly. Roman Reigns, the professional wrestler. Here we go. Talked about um, <laughs> when you get tagged in real life. Oh, okay. okay. Like when it's in a match and it's fake. Well, but you are going to stage. Sorry. But you are going to hit sometimes. You're going to get hit sometimes. And he doesn't mind uh, a stiff shot or, you, you know, you, you fall really hard. But he said, don't fuck with my jaw. Mm. That's how I eat. You're, you're affecting how I eat and how I sleep. Yeah. Hoffman oh. looks. So miserable because he probably is. Look at his fucking face. It's 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 he's Swollen. he's got a second smile. Yeah, carved into his face. And with, that's here's the thing about the blood on there on his face is that it wasn't like a knife that cut that. It was a very very blunt stick. That's made the of next carbon day. Fiber. Yeah, that's the next day. So like the dude has just been bleeding on and off. For 24 hours. Yeah. By that point. And then he's got to put his a fucking face full face swollen. shield on. His face is swollen. Uh, how fucked up are his bottom teeth? Oh. Can you imagine? Like, because you know when you get like a little canker, you get a little sore in your mouth and your tongue always goes there? You imagine oh. what, it, what it feels like on, along the teeth line of the inside of his mouth? And that's worth one game? Stop breaking the law, asshole! Like, it's nothing against AJ Greer. It's nothing against no, the this, Bruins. No, this can happen to anybody. We're not going after... No. And like... It's you, Department of Player Safety. You. It's funny... You look at the play, and I like it. The impact looks like nothing. So you're like, ah, is he really? And then you see the video, mm -hmm. and yeah, he fucked him up. Cross checks him right in the teeth, basically. Does anybody fight AJ Career after that? No, 
they, they all, didn't see it. They all got into like a little scrum Shoving thing, buddies. But yeah, it didn't lead to anything. I don't think, well, the, the, Boston, I don't think they the Bruins it. shouldn't be called the Bruins. They should be called the Boston. What the fuck are you going to do about it? And that's yeah. been their brand for a decade and a half. And it works. And it's gotten them to three Stanley Cup finals. And it's gotten them to You know? So, yeah, I cross-checked you in the face. What the fuck are you going to do about it? And the answer from the Habs was nothing. Are the Habs going to play Boston again? Because that's a game I want to watch. Good question. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at. It's uh, so unfortunate to do that in a meaningless game. You know, you're you're yeah. at this point of the season where you got double digit games left, and you get uh, ooh chin. last game of the year, Canadians Bruins. Oh no way! You get sweet chin music from AJ Greer. Like that yeah, sucks for that, Mike Hoffman. That does suck. And here's no the thing. Bruins starter is None, playing in that. Game. I doubt even AJ Greer plays that game. That's that's the Providence Bruins taking on Laval. I think he plays that game on the first line. <laughs> I uh, yeah. yeah yeah Providence versus well the Habs are Laval right now. Yeah, because everyone's they are. hurt. I like if Jack Eye was still in the lineup, you know maybe it'd be a little spicier. But like yeah, all their guys are out. Man. Yeah, a hundred percent. So listen, it's it's that's two games. I like Slam seeing dunk. that though. He's, We've seen Connor McDavid come out a couple times this year. We've seen Sidney Crosby because Connor McDavid's talked about the refing. He's talked about the playoff seating. Sidney Crosby, both of those as well. Mike Hoffman on his own Instagram. I like this. More of this. More of this. Start calling this shit out. It's bullshit. Peros is doing a bad job. And somebody's going to hire him to be their general manager. It's just the easiest thing in the world. No, All it's not. cross checks oh. above the shoulder. Make hockey are violent games. again, Steve. Oh, boy. Let's do the press conference. I'm going to hit the button. Oh, we're leaving? Huh? Whoa. No press conference. Whoa. Wow. You're doing a bad job. Are you in line to be a general manager in the National Hockey League? Answer the question. I'm already a GM in the National Hockey oh, League. Whoa. We have one of the cups. Have you? Have you? by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.